In the last exercise we looked at on closing work in progress, we assumed that our closing work in progress would have the same percentage completion for each of our cost types. In reality, if we are looking at the work done on our closing work in progress, it is likely that when we first begin the work on those units, we will add in all the additional materials we need first. So we will incur our material costs very early on in our processing. And then once we have done that, we will incur our additional processing costs, so our labour costs and our conversion costs. Now because it is likely that we incur our costs in this order, at the end of the period for our partially completed closing work in progress, it is possible that it will have a different percentage or degree of completion for each of the cost types. So perhaps by the end of the period, our closing work in progress will be fully completed for our material costs. So we have added all the additional material we need to to those units. However, we have not yet finished the units in that we still need to do some further processing on those units. So we still need to incur some additional labour and overhead costs to finish our processing work. Which means by the end of the period then, our closing work in progress units might be 100% complete for material costs and only 70 or 80% complete for conversion costs. So in that case, we have different stages of completion for each of our cost types. And we need to know, again, how do we value our output to finished goods and our closing work in progress when we have these different percentage completions for each cost type. Now we're going to follow the same three steps as we did in the previous exercises. So our approach is actually the very same. The only difference here is we're going to have to calculate a cost per equivalent unit for each different cost type. So while our approach is the same, it's going to take us a little bit longer because we have a few extra calculations. So let's have a look at an exercise to see how this works. Okay, so in this exercise we are given information for a particular period for a company. And we are told that in this period they have fully completed 2,100 units. So that is their output to finished goods. And they have partially completed 700 units. So we know then that this is our closing work in progress. Then we are told that the degree of completion of our closing work in progress is 80% complete for materials, 60% complete for labour and 50% complete for overhead costs. So as we are going through our three steps then, we are going to have to take into consideration the different percentage completion for each of the three cost types. In addition, we are told how much we have spent on each of those three cost types for the period. And we are being asked to calculate the total equivalent production, so that's just our statement of equivalent units. Then in addition, we have to do our valuation of our completed units and our closing work in progress. So just the same three steps then we've seen in previous exercises. So let's have a look. Setting up our first step, which we know is our statement of equivalent units.
As always, we will look at each component, the number of physical units, and we will calculate the equivalent units. But now we are going to have to calculate the equivalent units work done for each of the three cost types. So separately then, we will have to look at our materials costs, our labor, and our overhead. So, our first component then is our output to finished goods. There were 2,100 physical units in our output to finished goods. Now we're going to multiply this by the percentage completion to calculate the equivalent units work done for each of the three cost types. And what will be the percentage completion of our output to finished goods? We know it will be 100% complete. So this is straightforward then. For each of the three cost types, our equivalent units will be the physical units of 2,100 multiplied by 100%. So the equivalent units for each cost type will be 2,100. And that's our output to finished goods done. So our next component then will be our closing work in progress. There were 700 units in our closing work in progress. And we have to be a little bit more careful here. So we'll check back to the question and see what were our percentage completions for our closing work in progress. It's going to be 80% for materials, 60% for labor, and 50% for our production overheads. So all we do is apply these percentages in our statement of equivalent units to calculate the equivalent units for each of the three cost types. So bringing this information in then, for our material costs, we said our closing work in progress is 80% complete. So the equivalent units work done, 80% of 700, should give us 560. For our labor, our closing work in progress is 60% complete for labor. And for overheads, our closing work in progress is 50% complete. So the equivalent units work done in relation to labor costs then will be 60% of 700, 420. And for overhead costs, 50% of 700 gives us 350. So our approach is the very same. We're just multiplying the physical units by the percentage completion. But we have to do it separately for each cost type. So when we've done our equivalent units for each of our two components, again, we just have to work out our total equivalent units. which for our material cost then, when we add the two together, will be 2,660. For labor, we get 2,520. And for overheads, we get 2,450. And that's step one, complete. So once we've done that, we can move on to our step two which is, of course, calculating our cost per equivalent unit. We know that we calculate our cost per equivalent unit by dividing the total costs 
by the number of equivalent units work done. Again, because we have different stages of completion and a different number of equivalent units for each cost type, then we are going to have to calculate the cost per equivalent unit separately for materials, labor, and overheads. Now we have been given the information we need in the question. So we have been told separately what our total costs for the period were for each of the three cost types. So this is the information we will use to calculate our cost per equivalent unit. So if we bring that into our question, we've got our total costs for materials were 24,800, for labor 16,750 and for overheads 36,200. So now we can calculate our cost per equivalent unit just by taking our total costs and dividing by the number of equivalent units. So for materials, our cost per equivalent unit will be 24,800 divided by 2,660. So if you put that into your calculators, you should get a cost per equivalent unit for materials of £9.32 if we round to the nearest penny. For labour then, our cost per equivalent unit is 16750 divided by 2520 giving us a cost per equivalent unit then of £6.65. And finally, for our overhead costs, we have 36,200 divided by 2,450, which gives us a cost per equivalent unit of £14.78. pence. And so we have completed our step two. We have calculated the cost per equivalent unit for each cost type. And now we can use this information to do step three, where we put a value on each of our two components. So step three then, is our statement of valuations. And in this step, we are going to look, have to look at how much we have spent on the component for each of the three cost types. But again, for each cost type, all we do is multiply the equivalent unit's work done by the cost per equivalent unit. So starting with our output to finished goods then, For our output to finished goods, our equivalent units were 2,100 for all three cost types. So, for materials then, in total we have spent 2,100 multiplied by our cost per equivalent unit for materials. So these are our material costs. Then we need to add on how much we have spent on these units in relation to labour costs, which again will be our number of equivalent units multiplied by the cost per equivalent unit for labour. So we have 2,100 multiplied by 665. So these are our labour costs. And finally, we need to add on how much we have spent on our overhead costs. 
Very same thing, so we just add on 2,100 equivalent units multiplied by 1478, which is our cost per equivalent unit for our overhead costs. So, I hope you've worked that through. If we punch those numbers into our calculators to get the total value of our output to finished goods, you should get 64,575. So our valuation of our output to finished goods is complete. Now we just need to do the very same thing again for our closing work in progress. So let's just remind ourselves in our statement of equivalent units, what did we have for our closing work in progress? 560 equivalent units for materials, 420 for labour, and 350 for our overhead costs. Okay then, so if we bring that information down to our statement of valuations, we get the value of our closing work in progress. So starting with our material costs, 560 equivalent units multiplied by 932. And we add on how much we have spent on labour for these closing work in progress units. We've done 420 equivalent units work, multiply by our cost per equivalent unit. And that is our total labour costs relating to our closing work in progress units. And then finally, we add on our overhead costs, so 350 equivalent units, multiply by 1478. So, again, if you put that all into your calculator and work it through, we get the total value of our closing work in progress, which should equal 13,185. And so we have completed the exercise. We've done our statement of equivalent units and we have worked that through to calculate the value of our output to finished goods and our closing work in progress. So our three steps were the very same, just a few extra calculations.